All right, guys, uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking or rather explaining the storage plan of container ships. So we'll be talking about how containers are stored on the ships. How are they assigned a position and uh, how do you understand those positions? Right. So in my previous video, I talked about the lashing arrangements or the lashing of container cargo. And in today's video, we'll talk about the storage plan. This video is a a must for those of you who have not been sailing on container ships you are not aware of the storage arrangement on container ships because if you go for your oral examination the surveyor will definitely ask you about different type of ships and one of those different types is of course container ships because they are the most commonly found ships uh, in the trade so it's a good idea for you to become familiar with this type of ship all right so i have sailed mostly in my life on container ships so i like to uh, assume that i know a little bit about container ships so let me know at the end of the video if you have any further questions queries or concerns about what i have talked about in this video today so we'll start with the uh, numbering system uh, that is used on container ships and the numbering system or rather the storage system is based on a system uh, which is the bay row and tier system all right so that is how the cell position what is the cell position the cell position is the position where a container is placed we call it cell location or cell position so the cell a particular cell on a ship where a container is stored is assigned a bay a row and tier all right so the cell position is to be identified by the three factors the first one is bay the bays are counted from the forward part of the ship to the aft part of the ship starting from bay 0 or bay 1 but it starts from the forward and then all the way to the aft right the row is counted in the direction from the ship's center line to the port side or starboard side all right so center so if there are two hatch covers on a ship uh, the space between the two hatch covers is considered row 0 and then on your right on your starboard side you may have the odd numbered of rows like row 1 3 5 7 9 and on the port side, you may have the even number of rows, that is row 2, 4, 6, 8, like that. All right. Of course, you, the system may differ, but most of the ships, it's like this. And then you have the tier. The tier is, of course, the vertical direction from bottom to upward. So the first container on deck that is loaded or other under deck is the first high container. Then you have the second tier container, which is the second high container. Then you have the third tier container, which is the third high container. Right. So that is how a particular container's location is described. It's described as per the bay, the row, and the tier. So bay numbers are indicated by odd numbers starting from the forward to aft for 20 feet containers. And for 40 feet containers is the even number. So the odd number bays show 20 foot container base. So you have bay number 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. They are all will be for 20 feet containers. But if a 40 feet container comes in, we don't say bay 1 or bay 3. We say bay, bay 2. So bay 2 is between bay 1 and bay 3 and bay 2 assigns a uh, 40 feet. It's assigned to a 40 feet container. All right. Bay 1 and bay 3 is assigned to a 20 feet container. So you may have two 20 feet containers in bay 1 and bay 3 or you may have one 40 feet container in bay 2. All right. So when a pair of 20 footer bays is used as a 40 footer bay, either fixed or convertible, this 40 footer bay is represented by an even number. All right. So an example is that a 40 footer bay consisting of or converted from a 20 footer bay between bay 5 and bay 7 is number 6. So I've already explained that to you. All right. So 20 feet foot containers are also similar. You can see here in the picture, you can see how the bays are uh, shown. You can see bay 1, bay 3, they're all 20 feet containers. Then bay 5, bay 7, bay 9, 11, they are all 20 feet containers. But if you have a 40 feet container, for example, bay 10, you can see that is a 40 feet container or if a 40 feet container was loaded on bay 5 and 7 then you will call it bay 6 so a 40 feet container is assigned bay 6 or bay 10 that is the even numbers and the odd numbers are assigned to the 20 feet containers that is what the picture here shows and hope that helps you with the understanding as well then we have the row numbering now you can see here the rows uh, the rows actually like i told you the if there are two hatch covers now you have to be looking from aft to the forward direction if you're looking in that direction, I'll show you a picture. I'll show you where I'll explain it to you, um, where you can see and you will explain the row numbers. Like I've told you, the row numbers are, uh, the even numbers normally are on the port side and the odd numbers are normally on the starboard side. So on the even, num on the port side, you will have all the row numbers like two, four, six, eight. 
and on the starboard side you will have the odd numbers like uh, one three five seven nine that you can see here on your screen now normally uh, these are the ones uh, designated to the hatch cover so the containers are loaded on the hatch covers and these row numbers are designated to those containers now between two hatch covers there is a blank space there is an empty space there is a walkway uh, not walk where other you can't walk on that, but there is a space available between two hatch covers between two cargo holes. That that row is sometimes called row zero. Okay, so we have row zero zero, and then we have one three five seven nine on the starboard side, two four six eight ten on the port side. And depending on how many rows we have these days, we have bigger ships, bigger breadths. You have number of uh, containers being loaded. You may go more rows. There may be more rows available. All right. And then you have tier numbering. You can see how the tier is numbered here as well. I'll show you another slide where you can see the tier numbers. So the tier numbers they normally start from zero to, and that represents a standard height container, which is about eight feet, right? Or eight feet six inches for forty feet sometimes as well. All right. So for ordinary height containers, only even numbers are to be used. And when a certain row in a bay lacks the lowest location of the bay, tier numbers don't start from two but from a number, which represents the equivalent tier of the row now you can see here the tier numbers start from 82 then go up to 84 86 so it's basically the lowest tier is called 82 and then the tier after that is called 84 and the tier, third tier is called 86 so it goes on like that you can go up to 88 90 92 it depends on uh, how many uh, containers you are loading in every tier all right so that is how it goes i'll show you another slide as well so this is how it shows so you can see how uh, you have uh, you can see how the cell location is provided you know the the location has gone a bit off way here but you can see how the tiers are sometimes called 2 4 6 8 10 12 as well now this tier numbering is sometimes under deck is different from over deck so this uh, in hold inside the hold uh, we have 2 4 6 8 10 12 on deck you have 82 84 86 and that's because the you know containers are loaded under deck and then uh, uh, and then the hatch cover is placed and then the containers are loaded over deck as well now if we have the same tier system it will get very confusing for the person who's trying to understand the tier so that's why you need to have a different tier system for under deck containers to a different tier system from over the deck containers that's why you have 82 84 86 88 on deck and then you have 2 4 6 8 10 12 for under deck right and then of course you have bay and row just similar to what we talked about before now every officer and crew member should know how to read and understand the schematic plan given by the local cargo planner now the schematic plan will be using a lot of symbols and abbreviations you have to make yourself very familiar with that i have provided some of the abbreviations and symbols that are commonly used and you can see uh, aside from the symbols and abbreviations you will also have information on container by looking at the number of container and i have talked about that in my previous in a separate video where i have talked about how the container number pretty much tells you the entire story of the container you know whether it's a 40 feet 20 feet whether it's a reefer uh, whether it's a high cube container or not so i won't talk too much about that but you can see here these are the symbols that are normally used on a schematic plan or a storage plan uh, in different ports and it's a good idea for you to become familiar with that or rather ask the shipping agent if he shows you a plan like that with symbols like that and if you're not familiar with it then ask them what every uh, symbol means and what it basically means I can just show you an example here that you can see here the 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 what do you call it the zebra mark or the danger mark the, that pattern there that I have highlighted there that pretty much tells you that it's a uh, high cube container these are eight feet six inches high so you can see compared to that a eight feet container is just right next to it and you can see they are much lower in height whereas the other containers is eight feet six inches so every high cube container will have that uh, yellow and black uh, diagonal marks uh, painted or other placed across it like a sticker that tells you these are high cube containers which are eight feet and six inches high all right and then of course um, uh, the location of we are basically talking about storage here so i don't want to go into symbols and abbreviations i have discussed all that in my other video as well. so i'll finally come down to finding the location of cargo which is based on the bay plan so the location of cargo is based in the order of bay row and then tier number all right and so the bay plan will also give the general description of cargo such as whether it is 40 feet or 20 feet that you understood already isn't it then the content of the cargo whether they are hazardous dry or reefer so you can see here how the uh, bay plan is showing you that there is a dangerous good cargo class 9 uh, or a dangerous good cargo class 3.2 6.1 uh, you can see here okay this is a this is like a transverse view 
of the storage plan if you're not understanding what is the view of this this is a transverse view uh, so you can see the rows are shown here and the tiers are shown here the base of course can't be shown in a transverse view but it basically shows you uh, the numbers bay 1 and bay you know so i don't know what number that is bay must be bay 19 uh, but yes so that's a transverse view of a storage plan just to explain things here all right and then uh, what else can i tell you about this so you can see uh, the port abbreviation is also sometimes given in the storage plan so it will tell you about the port abbreviation here of course it's not showing anything and uh, you can find the storage location the kind of cargo the size of the container you know whether it's 20 feet 40 feet whether it's a high cube and of course uh, the port of the destination the discharge where it will be discharged it is also provided in the storage plan so i have not been able to show you everything because it becomes very busy otherwise thus this video was only on understanding the bay row and tier system used in container ships and that is what my focus was with this video uh, i don't want to uh, discuss too many things about container ships in one video otherwise it gets very complicated i have previously made other videos on container ships and uh, different types of containers um, and uh, here uh, and lashing systems so please make sure you watch all the videos and have a good understanding of the container ships if you need any more uh, videos or any more topics in this type of ships please let me know i will try my best to make a video on that topic as well all right so if you have any questions uh, any doubts any queries concerns reach out in the comment section i look forward to your feedback comments and all the best with your studies guys keep studying hard uh, you need to aim for the sky uh, good luck and don't take stress bye